this is Abina at Cross Keys Crafts. Today I would like to show you a few techniques with mica powder. This came about because this morning I was watching a video by Marion Amberson. I'm going to link to that below. And she used an embossing powder that had some shimmer added to that. And I got the idea whether I could mimic that embossing powder by using clear embossing powder with mica powders. Well, the answer is to that, it didn't quite work, the mixing didn't work, but in the meantime, I figured out two more ways of creating a similar look, but I also want to show you a very simple look if you don't want to use embossing powders. I've already made a few samples here for me, just to see if that works. Um, this is a mica powder. I've had these for years and years. I actually bought these before I was paper crafting because I bought these to put on my fingernails. And they just came in these little pots and they all look, or very many of them look alike. I made a little sample here, but at that time I didn't realise that they actually have got a different look on black cardstock. So you, I don't know if the camera picks it up. So there is some of them have like a pinkish shimmer, some more of a bit of a blue, but they are really, really lovely. And so I'm trying to close that without leaving too much noise. So the pinkish bluish one I used on this piece on the black. I actually originally stamped on this this by the way is a woodware stamp if that is still available available i'm going to link to that below but i've had it for about four years i think and I originally stamped on this but i had some black residue and i didn't want to work with clear embossing powder over it i came back to this about an hour later and it was still sticky from the technique so i just put some blue embossing powder over that and it worked after all but the bigger effect you actually have got that on black cardstock and this is what I will show you today. So all this is, it's stamping with Versamark um, or any sticky embossing pad, the one you use for heat embossing. And then go over this with your mica powder and a soft brush. I'll show you that in a moment. So you have got this effect. The problem with this is when you use your finger over that, the mica powder can still come off a little bit not too badly but this is why I thought I could do with you know maybe finding out a different technique you can fix this by just putting some hairspray over that I don't have hairspray at the moment I thought I had but I can't find it so but it's a lovely shimmer effect and very subtle and this would work just like a background or the major motif of the card so then I thought, as I said, I going, oh, I was I mixed the clear embossing powder with the mica powder in this little pot and I applied it, but that was a huge fail, mainly because the embossing powder stuck to the uh, image and the mica powder sat on top. Well, I thought it was a fail. I ditched that thing. It probably would have worked because I did something similar afterwards. What I did was, and I'll show you that as well, I used the mica powder as before, just on the Versa mark, and then I put this back into my stamping platform and stamped over that again with a Versa mark, and then applied the clear embossing powder. And it's not perfect. There are areas here that I don't have embossing powder on them, but the rest has got a raised texture, and I think this is really nice. I'm only just thinking this would actually be really nice as well to fill in the areas and paint with the mica colours. I might show you that as well in this video if it doesn't get too long. So, and then the last one I had a play with that is I put embossing, clear embossing powder over this and then uh, before I heat set the embossing powder, I sprinkled the mica powders on here and in different areas. It's not as perfect as I thought it would be. Um, well, I knew it wasn't perfect, but I'll show you that as well, how I've done this. And basically, when I melted the embossing powder, it bonded with the mica powder. I think I need seed setting here a little bit more. And I've got this sort of multicolour technique. It's not perfect if you want to have certain areas like the full leaf here in green. 
but uh, and it was a bit messy this is why I work with different colors here because I've got plenty of the individual colors um, but I will show you that in a uh, in a moment in a technique where you don't need to have certain areas and you can just go over this so let me just clear my table and get my stamping platform ready and then I'll show you the different techniques as always, when you're working with um, embossing powder, use your anti-static powder tool for your cardstock so you don't have any residue where you don't want this. So I'm just putting my magnets back. I've got a background stamp again. These are some flowers. Obviously, you can use much smaller stamps. I just want to use these as backgrounds um, for this project. So, um... Use your Versamark as normal or any embossing ink. Make sure, sorry if the camera wobbles. Make sure you've applied this every, everywhere like you would with normal heat embossing. The black cardstock I'm working on, by the way, is just a standard one. It's fairly smooth, but it's not very thick. Make sure you don't have a cardstock that is too porous because you need the Versa fine, sorry, the Versa mark to be really fine. I'm just holding this against the light to see if I've stamped everywhere. There is a little bit where I haven't stamped properly. This looks better might have moved a little bit in the meantime but it doesn't matter so what you need ideally is a soft brush i've actually got this uh, eyeshadow brush that is really soft and talking of eyeshadows if you don't have mica powders you can use these shiny eyeshadows probably even the matte ones so i just want to show you this is a beautiful pink purple color so i'm just dabbing this on here and i can just Go over that flower there and you can see the Versa um, mark picks up that colour. Don't press down too harsh, you don't want to smear the Versa mark. But you need obviously a bit of pressure to apply this properly. I'm using this purple as well. I'm not sure how well they show up on this cardstock whether they are as shiny as the mica powders but I shall just leave it there so and then I'm just picking some more colors from my stash let me just quickly do this off camera sorry I haven't prepared that so it's important that in between colors especially if they're not that close that you quickly wipe off your brush and I've just put a few mica powders here on the side you don't really need a lot. You can also dab it on. Yeah, these are definitely better than the eyeshadows. But as I said, it's an alternative, the eyeshadow. I'm just dabbing it on like this. Picked a bright red as well. Just have a play with this. It's really good fun. Oh, I shouldn't have gone straight into the blue. Having said that, everything is okay if you want to go into the colours and mix them. I will probably go all over with my brush anyway afterwards. More red. Once you've put the colour down though, um, you can't go over it. So make sure if you want certain colours in certain areas, you put them down first. Just checking where I've got need to put apply a bit more colour. What I'm doing now is actually just filling this in. Sorry can't actually see this that well this is a bit better for you so I'm just using the excess that I've got on the card now basically to sort of blend it in and once you're sure you've put color everywhere you can also lightly go over that in huge circles yeah, I haven't stamped well enough, but that's not a problem. I will just put my decoration or my sentiment over that. So what I'm doing now, let me just lift it up. 
I'm going to take another soft brush. I've got again, I've got a makeup brush here. These are really cheap, probably from the pound shop, but it's important that they're um, really soft. I'm going to brush all the excess off into my bin here underneath me. I don't like to have it on the table. So let me just do this. So, and what you're left with then is this beautiful background. There's a bit more that I could probably brush off. As I said, it's a bit splodgy here in the middle, but I think this is very beautiful. It's always a bit difficult to catch this on camera. So that's the first technique. So for the second one, coming back with my cardstock. Again, need the anti-static powder. So this time I need to be mindful as well because I don't want to double stamp. So I've aligned it there at the top. So I need to make sure with the second row I'm going to align it in the same place. Just checking this here. Oh, it's actually a bit higher than I thought. Never mind, I might um, stamp off it a little bit as long as I've got it aligned there. So I'm going to apply my Versa mark again. This time I'll make sure I've got enough in the middle. And apologies for the camera wobbling. Yeah, I don't know why this is all. This might be a smaller piece, that might, might be why. So let me just take a bit of magnets off there. I didn't measure these properly when I cut them. This is stuck to here now. Not a problem. Just need to make sure I'm picking it out the right way. So I'm off camera. There's a little problem here with the stamping. It might be sometimes the stamps, some of these come from China, they're not thick enough. I might have to put a little uh, piece of cardstock underneath. I might do that for the second layer. So I'm doing the same as before. I'm going to apply the mica powder just all over it and I quickly do this off camera and then I come back. So I've applied my um, mica powder here, I've brushed the excess off and I've already inked up the stamp again with the Versamark. I haven't stuck this down so I'm hoping that that just, oh and I put two pieces of cardstock underneath as a shim, so I'm hoping that this hits the same spot as before. I'm having a quick look before I'm pressing it down. It looks like it's done, is it? But it shouldn't be. It should be in the same place. It's tricky. Um, I should have used a bigger cardstock, so I had the magnets to hold on to it, but it should be okay. Also make sure when you pop it back in that you've got it the same way around. It's easy to accidentally put it the other way around. So I'm basically now applying some Versamark on top of the mica powder. Oh, can't peel this off now. Let me just set this aside. And now I can use my clear embossing powder on this. This, by the way, is just from a Paper Craft Society box. You want a fine one, ideally. But I found in the past the brand doesn't really matter as long as it is fine. And I'm keeping mine in this box so I can actually contain the mess. Oops, shouldn't have put my finger in that, but never mind. So you can see now because it's all white that my mica powder is underneath and this is nicely covered. I'm not too bothered about the edges because I'm going to heat set this anyway. So I will heat set this off camera 
So I will heat up my heat tool, but I will heat set this from the back. I'm not blowing on the front. I will heat set this from the back. And when I can see that the powder has all melted and the mica powder underneath shows, then I can come into from the front and finish off any areas that I might have missed. If you blow in from the front, sometimes it can blow the embossing powder away, especially as we're now sitting on top of the mica powder and I don't want that. So when you look at this like this, it looks really dull, but against the light, look at that. Um, I used some gold and a rose and some axis of the blue. So you've got all this shimmer in there. There's still two areas here in the middle where it still hasn't stamped that well, but it's definitely better. And you've got all the shine here from the clear embossing powder. I think this is really subtle in a way, but really, really pretty. But if you're not sure about this, um, use some smaller stamps, practice with them. You could also have a bigger effect if you use more solid stamps. These obviously are all open because these are background stamps. Um, but yeah, you could have a different effect. I'm actually just contemplating whether for my last technique I should change this and show you something different. Let me just see if I can find a different stamp. For the third technique, I'm using this butterfly stamp here. This is from a magazine. I can't quite remember which one it is from. I think I bought it last year. But if you've got those stamps, um, it is a bit more open than I had planned, but it's got darker areas and I think it'll show up nicely. And it will be perfect for me to use on one of my backgrounds, actually, because I don't want any more backgrounds. I don't really need that. So I have already used my anti-static powder tool on this and what I'm going to do now is to ink it up like normal. Oh, and I have wiped my stamp with a cloth. I have never used this stamp before and because it is a magazine stamp, sometimes you get some residue on these from the production. It can be a bit oily and it can resist the ink. So it's best to... Um, clean these off a little bit or you could stamp these off if you wanted to so i think i've got this everywhere this by the way is just a doorknob that i put some felt underneath that allows me to give some even pressure to this stamp yeah, and against the light, I can see where I have stamped it. I really like this. It's a sort of a grungy look to it. So, and as before, I'm going to put my embossing powder on here. And I'm moving this out of the way. Oops. So, and the reason why I've got some cardstock underneath here, this is going to get a little bit messy now. I'm not heat setting this. I'm going to sprinkle my mica powders straight onto the butterfly. So, I'm not too worried about um, using too much. You can't really use too much because um, these are really big and you don't need a lot. So I'm just using, a, this is a glossy blue, this is a violet. If you wanted to, you could use your brush, but I'm worried if I use the brush that I'm brushing the um, embossing powder off and I don't want that. And it worked fine for me before. As long as I can make sure I've got enough in all areas. If you wanted to, you could use a little spoon. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to shake that a little bit and let the embossing powder go over the card a little bit. It's a bit sticky. So 
just moving it about. Don't worry about the excess here, that will come off afterwards. So I'm really moving this about, hoping that I get it all covered. I might actually take it off like that and then I can use this mixed axis to go into the area where I can still see the bare embossing powder. Let's get my brush here to brush that off. Hope you can see what I'm doing. So you might be going a bit off camera there. So I'm just brushing this up there. I'll see whether with my soft brush, whether I can spread it out a little bit more, but I'm more dabbing than actually brushing. I don't really want to get onto the embossing powder too much. I hope I haven't lifted it off. So and now, as before, I'm going to get rid of the excess on over my bin. I've got a bin liner in there, so. Yeah, there might be a bit where I haven't covered any anything with the mica powder. Can you see? So, as before, I'm going to heat set this from the back and then I'll come back and show you how to get rid of the excess. I've heat set this now and I will put a disclaimer in there. It's not a good idea to use your brush. Can you see at the bottom? I've wiped this all off, I think. But I can just use my soft brush again. I can go all over this. Oh, it's not too bad, actually. The bottom, it looked a bit dull. And can you see there? Get this really, really great motif. You can also see sometimes where you still need to heat set it a little bit. I would have to heat set it here, but I think I might actually fussy cut this anyway, so I'm not too bothered about that little speck. But isn't that cool? So you basically, I could maybe heat set it a little bit more here. So you basically get the look of shimmer embossing powders without spending an extra penny. That is if you've got mica powders or eyeshadows plus your clear embossing powder. So off camera, because I think this video might be too long anyway, I will finish these cards and then I just show you the cards and talk you through what I have done to create these. Whilst I was creating my first card, I thought I'd just pop in again and show you a few tips and tricks. Um, I have fussy cut the butterfly here. I think this is really beautiful and I thought about using this as the background. But when I do, first of all, it is a bit overwhelming. It's sort of shine on shine and um, yeah, it is a bit too much. So either I can use it on a plain card, but then I wanted to use this. So to remedy that, first of all, I have chosen a blue card base, which will go nicely with the blue in on the butterfly wings. So I have cut this to size. This was actually quite a funny size, probably an American A2. So this is now three and a half by five and a half, I think. And I've cut my card base accordingly. This is now four inches by five and three quarters, I think. So I've got a nice edge here on either side. But I've still got the problem that the butterfly here won't really pop. So what I've done is I have checked my card scraps for a colour that goes nicely with the green here. And what I found was this is a piece of these envelopes that came with the Paper Craft Society Advent Calendar last year. So I just cut a strip here. I've heat embossed birthday wishes on there. This is from the same stamp set as the butterfly. And I now can place this on here. This is why I haven't glued it together yet. On the side, probably chop it off like this. I might even cut it a little bit slimmer. And if I place the butterfly on here now, you can see it pops from the background. It doesn't get lost. Sorry about the glare there. So once I've glued it down, it will sit like this. I might even pop it on foam tape because it's fairly sturdy with the 
embossing powder on it so that might actually be a nice feature as well if I pop it up so I just wanted to show you this before I glue it all together so it's quite a few hours later I've been working in the meantime um, but then I came back into my craft room to finish off these cards and I just would like to sh talk you through now what I have done this one here the um, drops are still drying I added these Dovecraft uh, 3D pearl effects. I'll tell you in a moment why. I used my white background and then these are just the mica powders and the same on the black. That was just the Versafine, um, sorry, the Versamark um, sticky embossing ink with just the mica powder, no embossing powder. And I cut two circles out of the darker version and just pop them on here on some foam pads for me to be able to align them i don't know if the camera picks it up so these are the same areas as they are underneath so they stick in the same place but for me to be able to maneuver them around a little bit underneath the sto um the foam pads i put a bit of wet glue so i could move them a little bit around so i've basically got a continuous image but two of these are in black. This is called a spotlight technique. You might have seen these um, with other crafters. But when I cut this out of the black cardstock, I didn't realise how close this was to the edge. And I also didn't plan ahead when I cut these out where I would put my sentiment. Ideally, if I hadn't stuck this down on my card base, I probably would have had it the other way round and have this at the top and this one here and then the sentiment obviously um, just at the bottom obviously the right way around um, but I didn't plan ahead so I had to stamp my sentiment at the top here this by the way is from a lovely set this is from visible image I'm going to link to that below these are very useful and very pretty uh, sentiments. I don't have a lot of sentiment stamps but I keep on coming back to these because these are really good quality. They're stamped very nicely and I like the sort of script writing of these. So uh, by the way I mounted the white cardstock on a black one just to tie these circles in. This all went onto a white cardstock. I only unfolded it because it still needs to dry flat. But because it's a sort of just the two uh, pieces of black here and the frame, I didn't quite like that. And this is why I came in with my pearls. So if you've never used pearls before, you just pop them on the um, space where you want them. And then you just give it a bit of a tap and they flatten out. I did have a little accident at the bottom here, though. There was a little bubble. And this is why these are so close together. But I think this is still fine and nice but as i said in hindsight i should have planned this a little bit better but yeah i love the shimmer on this and i think it's subtle enough for a sympathy card so this one i had already shown you and showed you what i had planned um i popped the wings up on some foam pads but the body i glued down straight into the card so you've got dimension there which i think is really nice and I can't remember whether I showed you before, but I just popped it on blue to tie in with this one. And I've also put a white piece on the inside to write on. Yeah, I'm really pleased with this. I think this looks really, really nice. So then this one is the embossing powder, clear embossing powder over the mica. Um, yeah, and with this one, I just cut the panel down. I... Um, He'd embossed a sentiment in silver. At first I thought about staying in this sort of black colour scheme, but I thought it could do with a pop. This is just on some purple scrap and I wrapped this around the black panel. If you wanted to, you could just cut it off on either side, but I quite the, I liked the idea, especially as it was very thin cardstock to wrap it around. And yeah, I just put that on a purple card base and put the white panel on the inside. And the good thing about having a panel here, same as with the butterfly, although the butterfly one, I did it also to make the butterfly pop, is if you've got any areas, as I had underneath here, that are not that well embossed, you can easily hide that. 
and I think again it makes a very simpler card but sometimes you don't want anything too spectacular especially if you need a card for somebody you don't know too well this is a sort of a neutral card but definitely for somebody who likes purple and I know quite a few uh, people who like purple so and then the last one with this one same thing I put it on a colored piece of cardstock this is just some blue and that was just the other half of the butterfly card I again stamped and he'd embossed the sentiment this one I wanted to have a bit of a bit slimmer because I wanted to expose more of the image and I cut this down I didn't wrap this so I quite like this but what I did with this this was the one that um, where I had the different embossing powders different colors all in one and I know I'm losing that sort of effect a little bit here but I colored this in with my homemade um, mica paints what this is is I've shown these in videos before I have mixed all my mica powders with some gum arabic it's called it's a it's a powder and this allows it and I just put in some water I bought this this as an empty uh, case you can buy these you can also use other little containers but I thought it would be nice to have these contained in the box so I mix these with gum arabic and the mica powder not quite sure anymore about the proportions I'd say one to one maybe but maybe two lots of mica powder and just one lot of gum arabic if I can find any information in my old videos I probably remembered back then I will put it in the description box and then I just added water to just mix these and I, I let them dry in here and this gives me now some basically some mica watercolor paints that I can use just with a water brush or you could use any brush that you dampen so all I need to do to use these is just put a bit of water in sometimes I actually like to spray it as well so I'll just demonstrate that let me find some scrap paper I've got some scrap paper here so that just loosens the mica powder and you can use it like a watercolour and obviously on the black cardstock it really really pops so I just coloured these in and it, they um, because of the heat embossing they stayed nicely contained and yeah I really like this now and again it pops on the black especially in the right light and yeah I think this is really cool obviously if you have these sort of watercolours you can have this effect with just a plain embossing so you could just emboss in black if you wanted to and then color in as I said the effect of the different colored embossing powder gets a bit lost here but I think this is really nice um one panel I did not use having said that I used it in oh that's I used it as a mat on this one here that was the um this flower design but just with the mica powders I decided I didn't like it enough for me to use it and I quite often do that as well if there's something I don't like um, then I just dispose of it or reuse the back if I can um, yeah this is why that one is not here so yeah I'm really pleased with my cards I think they look really nice and I just reminded myself you know what it's like to work on black cardstock I don't do that often enough but I really like the look of these cards let me just pop this in as well in the photo although this is still drying so yeah if you like these cards too you might want to give me a thumbs up and if you'd like to see more of what I'm creating I post videos at least twice a week you might want to subscribe to my channel I'd be very happy about that and I'll see you soon with another video.